I have a hard time thinking about being a, a writer because it's kind of like saying, are you a breather or an eater? For me, a book is a, an opportunity to take all the, la all the work that I've done in the last several years in a variety of fields, consulting, speaking, uh, television, you know, building projects, consulting to startups, you know, all the, you know, doing technology, and bring it all together around one, one thesis and spend a serious amount of time digging into it, you know, and kind of untangling the knots and figuring out what's really there. One of the posits in my book is around the fact that causality is infinite which is kind of my little Zen Cohen. Basically what that means is we can make models of what in fact impacts other things. You know, the weather happens because evaporation makes clouds and clouds are heavier and they, you know, then they sink and then the, the, the temperature makes the evaporation occur, you know, in reverse and then you get rain and then there's, you know, percolation and river, you know, we can like model out this whole system. But all of our models of the weather are still pretty crappy. And that's because over the course of the entire globe, there's untold elements that are affecting the weather, and we're just not able to model them all yet. Well, eventually, maybe we will be able to make a perfect model of reality, but we're sure not there yet. And so the best second approximation thereof that I've come across is intuition. And it's also terribly error prone, but it's built for highly context dependent, fuzzy, evaluations that are dynamic, right? And that's essentially what human relationships are. Computers and computer systems, technology systems are all getting better at supplementing us. This is a big argument that's been going on in the computer science community for a long time is um, IA versus AI. So AI is artificial intelligence, right? Maybe we'll make a neural network which is based on the structure of the human brain or you know, one of many different theories to create an, an intelligence. That's AI. IA is intelligence augmentation, and that's been going on since the abacus or before, you know? And the idea there is the human brain's really good at certain things. So let's help make that better by supporting it, right? So the abacus does that in terms of helping you do maths. Uh, the internet helps you do that in terms of accessing knowledge. One of the things that I haven't seen computers do very well so far is model human relationships and emotional entanglements in a useful way, right? eHarmony may do a reasonable job of matching people up who were meant to be together. I think it's more likely that what eHarmony does is match up people who may possibly match well together and happen to both want to be matched up together, right? It's a different thing. The result of this is that if you start looking at what technology can do and what you should be doing with it, my posit is that it's better to look at what human brains are really good at and figure out what they're doing badly and shore up that part instead of trying to replace the whole thing entirely. Hi, I'm Josh Klein, author of the upcoming book, Reputational Economics, and you must subscribe to Thinker.